hey if you're new here I'm Victoria and on this channel I usually talk about movies books TV shows other things that interest me basically and today I will be talking about the movie Deadly Illusions I want to start this off by saying Deadly Illusions was a great bad movie there is a lot of potential to enjoy the terribleness of this movie and I did for sure for all it was pretty fun but also very ridiculous <laughs> so that's my like preface my warning it is a thriller movie but it is very goofy as well a short summary of this movie is that this movie is about an author her name is Mary and she is kind of brought into writing the last book for her super like best-selling series and as a result she can't take care of her kids as much, she doesn't have as much extra time, so she hires this nanny named Grace. And from then on, craziness ensues, basically. In terms of audience reception, this movie is not doing the best. Although, when I watched this movie, it was ranked number one most watched in Canada, but now it's at number two, oh big deal. But <laughs> it's getting a lot of views, but the views are not translating into satisfied watchers, I guess. <laughs> because currently on Rotten Tomatoes, the score they have for critics is 17% out of 100, and for the audience is 33% out of 100. Not as bad, but I think the reviews are expected if you've seen the movie. If you want to watch the movie without knowing what happens at the end, then I would advise doing that first. Or, you'd like, you're already here, you might as well just watch this video, but there will be spoilers. 100%. So if you're not into that, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into it. So at the beginning of the movie, once Mary decides that she wants to write these new books, even though she's adamantly against it, she talks to her best friend, and she tells her best friend that when she writes, she becomes a different kind of person. And this is told to us very ominously, very darkly, like it's something super negative. And I'm just telling you right now, it comes up again. The whole movie is based around this fact. And it makes Mary a super, ridiculously super <laughs> unreliable narrator. So throughout the whole movie, Mary is like stuck with this writer's block. And in order to give her time to write, she hires this nanny through an agency, right? So all day she has interviews to find nannies. And all of them are absolute flops. They all suck. She's not satisfied with any of them until the very last girl. A beautiful young blonde girl named Grace. Grace comes in. She's very quiet and she likes reading. She likes reading books. So basically, Mary chooses Grace because she likes to read, which is not a very good indication of one's child caring skills. Grace and Mary develop a close relationship pretty quickly, and then Mary starts having fantasies about Grace, right? And keep in mind, sorry, I forgot to mention that Mary is married to a man. <laughs> Mary's married. Oops. Mary's husband is working and he also doesn't have time to take care of the kids. Mary has these fantasies about Grace and she cannot distinguish what is reality and what is like fake, like what she's dreaming. So she goes to Grace and tells her that they can't have any more like relations and Grace is like, I don't know what you're talking about. And Mary's just like, yeah, you don't. <laughs> but as a viewer, you really like don't know <laughs> if what happened actually did happen because Mary is a super like unreliable narrator. But the whole mov movie basically goes back and forth with that, like little relation things happening between Mary and Grace, even. Um, Grace kind of getting her claws into Mary's husband Tom blah 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 that's going on together and then all of a sudden Mary's best friend ends up murdered like dead and then Mary is determined to be a suspect because her fingerprints are on the murder weapon and she has some unaccounted time from the night before which she doesn't remember what happened because she has been having these like Things where she can't tell what reality is so how is she supposed to be able to tell if she killed her best friend but she's adamant that she didn't but the police show her footage of a woman wearing a long coat and like a headscarf so you couldn't really tell who it is but the police said it was her but she's like it could have been anyone 
And realistically, it could have been anyone. The police don't know. So she lies to her husband and leaves the police station to see what's up with Grace because she already thinks Grace is sus by this point because she called the babysitting agency and they're just like, we don't have a Grace. And she's just like, oh, but I have a babysitter named Grace. And she says she's from your agency and they're just like, ugh, like what are we supposed to do with that? Like it's obvious Grace is not from this agency. So she looks up Grace's information, finds her aunt and then finds out, whoa, she had this really messed up past as a kid with lots and lots of trauma and then she determines that Grace is a dangerous person because of this trauma that she experienced. So she races home to go find her husband to try and warn him that Grace is a dangerous person based on the fact that she experienced a significant amount of trauma as a kid, right? Because that makes sense. But also the fact that she lied about being from this agency is kind of sketch, so I guess that makes sense. So while she's racing home, it cuts to her husband in the shower and Grace creeping up to him with a knife. And then she's saying all this stuff about him. And then she starts like slashing him, which is like, this girl cannot be more than like 150 pounds, for real. And this is like a huge man. The biggest thing in this movie that I couldn't get my head around was how she overpowered him. Like, yeah, if she had a knife, but it was like close combat. <laughs> they like struggled and like she won, which is like mad <laughs> props, I guess. Like, you had the skills. So he's all slashed up, laying on the floor. And then Mary comes home, and she's just like, Tom, where are you, Tom? So she's looking for her husband, and then Grace is like, oh my god, something bad happened, we have to go help Tom. And then they all race, go race to help Tom. The babysitter, too, the one that's just slashing him up. So they go, she comes, brings a bucket, starts cleaning up the blood. And then Mary's like, yo, what happened? And she's just like... I, I don't want to hurt you guys at all. And then she like switches and like her voice goes auto tune and deep and she's like, kill her. And then Grace is like in her soft voice now, I don't want to kill her. But then again, she's like, kill her. I guess the big twist at the end is that she has dissociative identity disorder. This trope is like super harmful, first of all, to people that actually suffer with DID. And they do like a weird like auto tune voice switch to switch between the killer identity and like the nice girl identity it's like super cheesy but ultimately she's subdued and they decide that she's the one that killed mary's best friend too everything cuts to a year later and everything's great everyone's living their best life except for gray slash her other identity right so mary's like visiting her in the psych ward and then there's a twist there's another twist when mary leaves the psych ward they cut to a scene of a woman in a long coat and a headscarf leaving, leaving the psych ward, and you don't see who it is. You don't see if it's Grace or if it's Mary. <gasps> and then it just ends. Then the movie ends. Awful. Awful ending. <laughs> That's all I have to say. This twist ending means one of two things. One, either Grace killed Mary and escaped in her clothes, and Mary's like knocked out in the psych ward and Grace just escaped or possibly Mary killed her best friend and is wearing the same outfit. Either one of those theories does not sit right with me. Both of them sound ridiculous. First of all, why would she keep the outfit that she murdered someone in if, if she did? Secondly, how could Grace get past security after she just killed someone if she did? Thirdly, Shouldn't that outfit be in like evidence if Grace wore it to kill Mary's best friend? Either way, I don't think she should have her hands on that outfit. It's kind of sus. Kind of dumb. Not even sus. It's just kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Whatever. This movie, I literally can't even with this movie. It was a lot of fun. Super ridiculous, but I can't. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribe, and comment if you have anything cool to add. I hope you have a great day.